Now, I'll be real honest on this page. I think all of these problems are a little bit on the tricky side, so we really have to think about them. And there could be more than one way to work them out, but these are gonna take long enough. I'm just gonna go with one way. If you got the same answer going a different way, as long as you show work, that way is completely fine. All right, so Ronnie's going to the racetrack um, every week. And this first week, he tripled his money, but then lost $12. So I'm gonna kind of write this as the algebra equation. So he tripled his money, so his money's gonna be X. Triple means we multiply by three, and then he lost $12. Um, so that's gonna be subtracting 12. And I'm gonna be left with a new amount of money. Now the next week, I take that money back, and this time, I double it. So I'm gonna double that money, and then I lost $40, or Ronnie did, and I'm left with this new amount of money. That's gonna be a Z, that's not a two. Then I'm gonna go back the third week, and he takes that money, so he takes Z, he quadrupled it. So four Z quadrupled, it means times four, and he left with $224. So I can solve this. I'm gonna to have to work backwards, but if I set this up, now I can solve. I can only solve equations that have one variable in them. So that means I'm gonna start with this 4z. I can divide by four to give me z equals 56. So then I can plug that in to this second, the blue equation and I can solve for y. So I'm just using some algebra here to solve for y. So I move the 40 over, and then I'm gonna divide by two, so that gives me y equals 48. So then I can take that and plug it into the top equation. Ooh, I'm gonna have to squeeze it in over here so I get three x, minus 12 is equal to 48, and I can solve for x, which is what I originally wanted, was how much we started the first week with. So I'm gonna add 12 to both sides, so I'm gonna get 3x equals 60, divide by three. So, um, and then, so my last step would be the 60 divided by three to give me $20. All right, if you need to go back and re-work um, that problem a couple of times, like to watch the video again, you can totally do that. You should be able to plug it in to check and make sure you got the right answer. So we could plug, let me see, plug this 20 back into here. So we'd have three times 20 minus 12. That gives me Y. So that would give me the 48. So then I would put 48 in here for this y times two minus 40 gives me 56 for z. And I would put it in here times four gives me the 224. So we can plug back in and check our answer on this for what that's worth. Um, don't know if that makes us feel any better or not. <laughs> All right, second example. We're getting away with pencils. So Bob has a set of pencils. The whole pencils I'm gonna call X. Kind of similar to the Catwoman problem we were working where all of her cats were called X. So the total is gonna be called X. We're gonna give away, so that's gonna be subtracting four fifths of our pencils to Barbara. So if I've got one whole set of pencils and I'm give away four fifths, I'm just gonna kind of come over here we could type this in our calculator. What I'm left with is one-fifth of my pencils. That's what I'm left with. Now, what he was left with, those remaining pencils, that's what I just did there, he gave away two-thirds. So he gave away two-thirds of the one-fifth of the pencils. And that left him with 10 pencils. So he started, so kind of reading across, he started with pencils. He gave away four fifths. 
If he gave away four-fifths, all he had left was one-fifth. All of his pencils, one minus four-fifth is one-fifth. He gave away two-thirds of what he was left with, and that left him with 10. That's how we read that across. So a um, couple different ways you can like type this in your calculator. You don't want to type the x in. I'm just going to write this as a 1x. There's an invisible, oops, too many lines there. There's an invisible 1 in front of it. 2 thirds times 1 fifth is 2 fifteenths x. Now, we can say 1, just the numbers here. Let me highlight those. So 1 minus 4 fifths minus the 2 fifteenths. So just typing those in, that's going to give me 1 fifteenth x is equal to 10. I'm gonna solve for x, a couple different ways you can do it. I'm gonna divide by one over 15. Make sure to put that in parentheses, and that's gonna give me x equals 150 pencils. Whew, Got, we're kind of done with the x's though. The next problem doesn't involve x's, thank goodness. So let's look at this very last problem I am going to erase this stuff up here just so I have a little bit more space. I'll be honest, I hate these like true faults because I feel like they're always playing with my mind. So, not my favorite. We're going fishing. There are four friends that are going fishing and they bring home a total of 11 fish. I'm told everyone caught at least one fish. So for instance, the friends each person could have caught one, and then the other person called eight, because that adds up to 11. It has to be a total of 11. So I'm adding four numbers together to get a total of 11. One of these statements has to be true. There's no way it didn't happen. Some of them could happen or could not happen, but there's one that has to be true. There's no way it didn't happen. So since it said must be true, or instead of could be true, what I'm really going to do is eliminate all the false answers. So I'm going to be checking to see if I can make 11 not using what's down here. So I can eliminate, and if I cannot eliminate it, then it has to be true. So I'm just going to start with A here. Can I make 11 in such a way that I would make this false? So one person caught exactly two fish. Yep, I've got it right here. 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 8, that's 11 fish. I made it work without anybody having two fish. So this is not true. I can make it be true, but the question asks which one has to be true. There's no way around it. It has to be true. Number two, or part B here, one person caught exactly three fish. Well, again, my example, nobody had three fish. So that one's not true. See here, one person caught fewer than three fish. Well, that works for this example, but let me see if I can make it not work because the whole key is to see if we can make it false. So I'm gonna see if I can make a different set of 11. One person caught fewer than three fish. Well, I wanna prove that wrong. I wanna prove that they all had three fish. So let me see what happens when I do all three fish. That gives me 12. I needed 11. The only way is to make it less. So somebody had to catch less than three fish. There's no way that you can add up four numbers and they all be bigger than three. So this one has to be true. You could stop right now if you wanted to. I'm not, I'm gonna keep going to prove that the other two are false. One person caught more than four fish. Well, looking at this example right here, three, 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 two, that equals 11. Nobody caught more than four fish, so I can make it, that one be false. Two people caught more than one fish. Going back up here to my first example that I had up here, I only have one person catching more than one fish, so that one's also false. So I eliminated all the false answers to be left with the true answer. So C is the true answer.